Yeah, here we are at the Rigs and Techniques, and we got Carl Weston coming all the way from the Fish Bites Upper West Coast region. Yes, sir. <laughs> going to talk to us about going offshore and catching some big baits to catch big wahoos and kings. Now, a lot of guys don't use bait, live baits, to catch wahoos, but what kind of baits are you doing? What are we doing to get catch those baits? Well, we're using these great products right here, like R&R, &R, Sabikis. Right. Right, use the sabiki rig to catch a live bait. You do? We, we, we're, you're catching big live baits though, right? So you're gonna be wanting to use something that... Yeah, we are catching big live baits. What's your favorite ones to catch? What are you at, what are your... This HT-16 yeah. is, is, some of the, is one of the better sabikis to use, and we're catching and big hardtails. Big hardtails, yep, blue two, runners. Two, three pounds. Let me hold yes. this for a second. Pick that up. Yeah, because this, this has got the, the 50 pound main line and the 30 pound branches, because right. the jackfish fights hard. Well, if you get three or four on the line at one time, they'll break off unless yeah. you have a good quality product. So, so what makes the uh, the Jack, the the Blue Runner, the best bait for what we're doing here? Well, accessibility for one, we have a lot of them. Yeah. And with the oil platforms in the Gulf, right? They're easier to catch, and they're hardy. They're a hardy fish. You keep them in the live well all day. It's hard to kill them. So, how yes. far out are you starting to target these baits? Well, if we start out, say we want smaller hardtails. Uh -huh. We'll start out on the can buoys, actually, on the way out of the channel. To catch little yellow fins and stuff like that? Yes, exactly. Right. And we'll move out probably 20, 30 mile range to the rigs there. So we're in 100 foot of water, and out there you're going to load up on the bigger hardtails, up so, to two, three pounds. So that what, what's the size that you're really looking to, what's your favorite one when you catch it? Oh, that's the good one. Well, I mean, <laughs> the biggest one I could find, Dave. Really? You know, really for Wahoo, if you're going for Wahoo. Right. I've never seen one too big for a Wahoo. I got you. And, you know, bait dictates the size of the fish. Right. So I've I've trolled four or five pound hardtails before and wow. you catch up the 80, 90 pound range wahoo. Right. And so uh what about with the what about with the kingfish? Is it the same kind of deal? It is. It is. You're bigger the bait, the bigger the bigger fish. Bigger the you're... fish. Yeah. Your rig won't be as big for the kingfish. Hooks will be a little smaller. Uh, but a wahoo doesn't seem to have any uh problem taking any size hook, any size bait. Right, so this one here that you've got is made, you made up for a kingfish, right? Yes, this is more of a kingfish size. Right. And we started with a 200 pound swivel with a 100 pound haywire. You have to have a good swivel because uh, keep it from spinning up. Yes, yes. And this, you simply haywire twist to the swivel, haywire twist back through the first eyelet of your treble, which will be your nose hook. Mm -hmm. Then you go through that eye again and you pick up your trailer. And of course, your trailer is going to be dictate the size by the size of the bait. Yeah. So that. So that, you, you measure it out when you get, put your bait out there. Yeah. If if I've got really big baits, I'm gonna I'm gonna extend this trailer hook down maybe four or five inches. It may be a foot long. Right. To actually let the beat the bait swim freely. For one, you don't want to disturb his action. Right. And then you want to you want to have it in the back part of the bait. Do of you, course. Do you pin it or do you let it hang free? I pin it. Okay, up on, do you put it on the towards the back or under the belly? On the back, I got up you. on top, yeah. So nose you. hook and then pinned up behind the dorsal. Well, um, do you ever use the coat? Do, do you ever use coated line and all that stuff? I know that we were talking about it earlier for the Wahoos. We do, we do. We use coated cable sometimes up to 200 pound test, and like you said, you know, we'll double crimp the hooks and swivels once again because if you're double crimped, it's not going to slip. So, yeah. do you, yeah. do you, when you're using the uh, braided line, what, do you use these the, the nice cutters here? Is this is kind yes. of like a Felco or what is it? Yes, that's a good, this is a nice clean cut so that when you're slipping through your uh, sleeves, you know how it'll fray up. Right. You want a nice clean cut. Right. It, it just, that slows you down. Um, Are you using crimps or? Yeah, we're using crimps on the coated cable. Right. But then on, uh, you know, the haywire, you could just cut with these. And your haywire twist. On so once you once, once you've got all your baits rigged up and ready to go, how far out are you putting them back there? I know you've got a little little whiteboard here that shows well, us a little bit about how far you've got them back there. Dave, yeah, we'll run usually three baits. You don't want any more of that. Sometimes two, depending on the sea conditions. Right. But we'll run one our, our shotgun out of the center rod holder, about 150 foot back. So we're trolling around live bottom structure. Right. The flower gardens. The flower right? gardens, east and west flower gardens, and we're we're circling. So to keep it the fish from getting tangled when you hook them, because usually when you hook a wahoo, they're in a school. You're going to catch one or two, maybe three. You might load the lines. Right. You don't want them crossing right so off the bat. So you want them a little bit staggered. So you stagger like 150 foot. We got marked there. 75 uh, on the port, maybe 50 on the starboard side, 
and you do your nice slow turn. And when the fish come on, you can move the rods around without wrapping everything up. <laughs> Which is normally what happens to me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, the guy yeah. takes off and starts to pass. It's like what I was talking right. about before. Right.